Are there other prayer requests? Okay, let's worship together. <clears throat> Come to the light that God has sent into our world. Let light flood our hearts and lives. The light is meant for all the world. We receive the light that we might share it with others. Let us worship the God who so graciously blessed us. We praise and adore our God of light.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you this night. First Corinthians 12. This passage that we're reading um, will be continued in coming weeks. Paul is writing to people who are going through um, a difficult time of disagreement, of division, and they're having a hard time living in their new world as Christians in their faith. It's interesting this reading begins with um, Paul reminding them that they used to be pagans and what it meant for them to be pagan was that they were enticed and led astray by idols that could not speak. Idols that can't speak are, are idols that cannot um, encourage very well. And sometimes I think that we are enticed and led astray by idols that do not speak life to us, that don't have the power to encourage and transform things into good for us. We hear the things that are around us and we get caught up in the things that um, end up with division and end up with uh, despair that end up with difficult things. These are this is this is kind of what Paul describes as being characterized uh, uh, for pagans, the characterization for pagans. And he says, "I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will ever say Jesus. Let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit." And so he contrasts here the pagans who are enticed by. Um, idols that can't speak with what God does speak and the unity that comes in the body of Christ by people who proclaim that Jesus is Lord, even though there are lots of other differences and varieties among the believers. There is this unity that brings them together that says Jesus is Lord and that the pagans, uh, the pagan gods, the idols, are not able to unite people under that claim that Jesus is Lord. So they're facing times of division. 
facing times of challenge, and they're not agreeing on how to go through these things. But what they are united in is that there is one Lord Jesus Christ who's called them, and they recognize this Lord in their midst. In our world today, we have divisions. Divisions throughout the country, divisions throughout the world, divisions in congregations, divisions in many different bodies in many different ways, divisions in government. And we are seeking how to be united and how to be brought together in this. And maybe what it is that will finally unite us is not all of the idols that we're enticed by that do not have the power to give life, but the Lord that calls us in one spirit that has the power to speak life to us. And when we recognize that Jesus is Lord, that is something that um, blankets over everything else. So he contrasts what comes from idols that cannot give life to the words that come from God and what unites us, that Jesus is Lord and that Jesus is over all. And we need um, God to be over all in this time. We need something that is stronger and greater than the things we encounter. Then he goes on to talk about the gifts, a variety of gifts, but the same spirit, a variety of services, but the same Lord, variety of activities, but the same God. There are many ways in which God is manifested. So each is given the manifestation for the spirit for the common good. And I think that that is something that is key here, that we need each other to get through that we don't make it through a pandemic, we don't make it through divisions, we don't make it through difficult times, we don't make it through, through life at all um, without working for the common good. And that common good is a common good for all people. It's a common good that crosses the line of parties and divisions. But Paul is speaking to this troubled community and says that the hope that we have is that the, all the diversity we have within us are gifts from the same spirit. And then he goes on to speak about these, that the gifts are varied and different and unique. Some are given the, utter the um, utterance of wisdom, to others the utterance of knowledge. And in the, at, at first we might think that these two things are the same, the wisdom and knowledge are the same, but I think that in times of COVID, for example, we have a lot of knowledge that we're gaining about the illness, about how it spreads, about the ways to um, protect ourselves. Wisdom is what we do with that knowledge. Wisdom leads us in, in knowing how to live, how to act. And the gifts of wisdom um, come from people who have the spirit of God on them, giving them wisdom this. Others, in our community have given us knowledge about this pandemic, and that's a gift from the spirits. To others is given the gift of faith. And I think that, you know, we can have a lot of knowledge about the pandemic, um, but we need people who have faith to carry and lift us in this time that's difficult. And sometimes our own faith is wavering, is lacking. Sometimes we are discouraged. Sometimes we think about, you know, what's the use of all of this? And we need voices that tell us that there is um, good reason for us to take these steps that will be for the common good, to give up our own weariness and to rise up again. And sometimes we need the faith of people, of other people, when our own faith is weary. There are gifts of healing by the Spirit. And so we have some in the pandemic who are coming through with the gifts of healing and are raising us up, um, who are working for the good and care of those who are, who are discouraged. Those who bring healing need the faith that others have in order to keep them going. Various kinds of prophecy of God speaking to us. And prophecy has often been interpreted as proclaiming what's going to happen in the future. But I think that prophecy in scripture is speaking the words that God has for us. That we need to hear the word of God proclaimed in the midst of these things. And there are people who are listening to God and praying and are receiving this message is from God about what we need. Discernment of spirits. And boy, is that ever a need that we have today. When there are so many spirits 
on the internet, so many spirits in our world. What is the right path to take through this? And so God gives the discernment of spirits as a gift. The gift of tongues, the gift of speaking, and for others, the interpretation of tongues, the ability to hear tongues and understand. We need all of these gifts in our community to raise us up and unite us. Sometimes maybe we are discouraged that we don't have some of the gifts. We might feel like, you know, I'm, I'm lacking in faith at this time. I'm lacking in things that I need. And so we need other people to lift us up and carry us through these times. And it is God's wisdom that gives us each one different gifts. To some, the gift of music. To some, the gift of perspective, of seeing where the camera should be set. And to others, the gift of um, technology. And sometimes we have more than one gift. Sometimes our musicians are the ones who are running technology. Um, so we have all of these different gifts that God is giving us. And it's, and it's through these combined gifts that we can worship at all this night. It is through the combined gifts that we go through the coming week. We aren't living alone at this time. We live in community. And these gifts are given not for personal isolated gain, but for the common good. But we don't look down on the gifts of some and say that these gifts are not important, but the gifts of the others are. I think that in God's economy, we need all people present. We need the gifts that all have. And that together we are stronger than we are if we are divided and stronger than if we are separated or scattered, stronger than if we are alone. These gifts are all activated by one and the same spirit. I've just um, gotten a new computer and had to transfer programs to the new computer. And so with these programs comes this process of activation. And so these programs aren't, uh, you know, they, they come with all of these gifts, with all of these capabilities, possibilities, but they need to be activated in order for those uh, pieces to work well on my computer. In the body of Christ, all of these gifts are activated by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God releases these gifts to all work together, to come together and work as a body. And it is, it says, as the spirit chooses. And the spirit might choose to do these in all different ways. And so we live through these times by the guidance and by the work of the Holy Spirit. And God may choose to work in one way one day in another, work in another way. And so we live by faith in God, resting and trusting in God. That we don't make the spirit work the same way every time. We don't force God into a box and say, God, you are only allowed to work in this way. But the things in this world are bigger than us, and God is bigger than us, and that's okay. In fact, it's a good thing. And we allow the Spirit of God to flow and move. In this time, we are called to be adaptive, to be flexible, to be willing to change, to be willing to be silent and listen for the Spirit at some times and to be willing to speak out at other times. These are times in which the world is changing. And God's gifts of the Spirit are sufficient to get us through. You know, this chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians 12 is talking about how God equips us with all that we need for the times that we are in. It comes right after um, the, the previous uh, chapter. God is talking about, uh, through Paul, don't be like the people of Israel in the wilderness who end up not believing and wandering aimlessly about for, for these 40 years because they can't overcome um, the challenges of entering the promised land. And don't be like the people of Israel who complained, even though God provided all the gifts. It's easy, I think, in these days for us to be... Um, discouraged and weary and complain. But I think what we're called to is to have our sight on God, on this God that leads by the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. To have God as our orientation and our guide as the one who's directing us because this will lift our eyes up above the things that bring us down. This will 
lead us to the promised land instead of being overcome by the giants in the land or the divisions or the um, inability to accept the circumstances we're in at the time. When we look to God, we have a picture of uh, a sight of a bigger picture that we are called for a larger process. We have these many, many gifts and a little foretaste of what is to come. After 1 Corinthians 12 comes 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. And all these gifts are united in love. All these gifts are brought together in love. All these gifts are to be used for the common good in love. And it doesn't do us any good to be fully equipped by, by all these gifts that God gives us and to not have love. Without, these, without love, these gifts don't serve the good of the community. Without love, these things aren't activated by the spirit because the spirit of God is a spirit that activates these things in love. So the gifts that we have are activated by the spirit of love and work in love. Um, a love that is grace-filled for ourselves and it is grace-filled for others. A love that is open-handed instead of approaching life with fists. A love that is seeing the good around us, that's patient and kind, that is seeing possibility and that holds to hope. So this night, we are hearing that God equips us for the times that we are in, he equips us with every good gift, and God sees fit not to give all of those gifts to one person. But we need each other because it would be too much for us to bear if we had to have all the gifts and had to be responsible for everything if one person had to save the rest. It's not the way it works, but it's the way our, our uh, individualistic world has sometimes described life, the need for a superhero to save the world. God's view is something very, very different from that. Equipping a body, each person with the role, each person with the place, each person fitting together with the others, walking together stronger, rising up by a spirit that fills all of those gifts with love. So may we be filled with hope, knowing that we are equipped by God. May we be activated by love to use what we are equipped with for the service of others and for the joy and delight and thanksgiving that God is alive, God is in our midst, and we have what we need. May God's peace be with you. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, our God, in your wisdom, you are complete and whole. In your wisdom, you provide all that we need in the way that we need it to be filled. Sometimes we want things to happen in a different timing or in a different way. But we can turn and we can trust you. We thank you for that. This night, O oh Lord, we thank you that you are God and that we are not. We thank you that you have the perspectives that we need and that we can rest in you. O oh Lord, we ask that when our vision is clouded, that we will turn to you and let go of our worries and concerns, place them in your care, and receive in its place your washing, your renewing, your energizing, and your hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, as we come to you this night with the thoughts of our world and of all that is taking place, of the things we hear in the news, of the things we experience and hear in what our loved ones are going through. We are thankful, O oh Lord, that you equip us as a community for what we need, that we get through these things together and that we're stronger together. So we come, O oh Lord, even as we have these requests this night, we come thankful that we are a community equipped by you. We bring before you Jeff this night and this coming week on Friday as he has surgery on his foot. And we thank you, O oh Lord, that you equip each person that will be working with him with different gifts. 
And together, these gifts provide what Jeff needs. And we ask, O oh Lord, that your spirit of healing and faith and wisdom and knowledge will be with them, will be with the people he encounters. That your spirit of strength and trust will be with Jeff. We ask, O oh Lord, that your healing will be released for him and that miracles of life will take place in the surgery that he has. Give him strength, O oh Lord. Peace in the days that lead up to this. Preparations, O oh Lord, that the things will all come that he needs to do before then. Safety and travel. And in the recovery, O oh Lord, that you would be upon him, raising him up, calling him to life, overcoming, O oh Lord, within him um, the need to be healed. And so we commend him to you. We thank you, O oh Lord, that as he walks forward to sh lie and shine the light for us in all of our worship services, that you will heal his feet as his feet take good news and light throughout this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We come before you, O oh Lord, with Rayanne's uh, former student, the six-year-old child, Blake, we bring Blake before you, O oh Lord, with news that he has an inoperable tumor in his brain. Lord, this is the knowledge that they have received. And we ask, O oh Lord, for, for your provision within the community, for wisdom of what to do with this knowledge, for guidance in the days to come. We ask, O oh Lord, that what they need will be provided, that the gifts that they need for healing, for support, for encouragement, for strength, for financial resources, to uh, overcome the pain and the hurting that they have for their child, that you would raise them up, O oh Lord, and equip them with every good gift that comes not through idols that cannot speak, but through a God who speaks life into being. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would speak life for them and that you would create for them the possibilities they need for joy and for fullness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you have spoken and have brought healing that we have asked for in the past. We thank you for the answers to prayer for um, Paul's brother-in-law, Donald, that he will be going home from rehab. We thank you for all of the miracles that have happened and the gifts that have come to place to make that possible. We ask, O oh Lord, that as he goes home for these next steps in his life, that your healing will continue for him, that your power will raise him up, that your spirits would be upon him and fill him with joy and guide him with your light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Paul's cousin, Patty, and Uncle Bob, O oh Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers and for your mercy and love and caring for them that they are on the mend. And even as they are on the mend, other family members are ill. The boys and Aunt Betty who have COVID. We lift them before you, O oh Lord, and we give you thanks for the healing that comes. And at the same time, our lives are mixed with joys and with concerns. And even as we lift up hands of thanksgiving, we lift up hands of prayer, commending these others to you. So we ask, O oh Lord, for your continued healing. We give you thanks for answers to prayer. And we commend to you who are worthy and able to care for our requests well and beyond our means. We commend these loved ones to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you for the gifts that we receive through families and loved ones. We give thanks this night for Deb's mother, who would be 100 today. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for the joy of dancing, for the joy that's spread and for the joy that we have in Deb, who is unique and comes as a gift from her mother to us. We commend again Deb and her mother to you and we give thanks, O oh Lord, for all of your faithfulness throughout the past hundred years for all of us, for all that she has been witness to and what she gives witness to today that we might not be able to hear or understand. We thank you for her dancing tonight on her birthday, in your presence, in the fullness of your light. We give you thanks, O oh Lord, for these wonderful gifts in our lives, for her gift and the light that continues to shine from her, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Oh Lord, we ask this night for Lita's friends, Dave and his mother, Rena, who's in the hospital. We ask this night on that holy ground where they are, that your peace would fill the room this night. That they would be able to release to you their concerns and anxieties. And that they would receive from you peace and fullness. That they would sense your presence in that holy place. That you would strengthen and renew those caregivers who surround them. That the care that is given, O oh Lord, will be effective and good. That they will be surrounded by your mercy. That they will respond to the good work and the life that is given through your children and their gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For young Atticus, this gifted child who is a crucial part of our community, who we've never met in person, but who has changed our lives by his persistent existence and exuberance and joy, even in the midst of challenge. This night, O oh Lord, we ask that you would equip him with every good thing and his family as well. That they would sense that they have the strength that they can't explain where that would come from. That they have the peace that comes from you. And that you would guide them in the steps ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Joyce's cousin Cheryl, O oh Lord, we commend her to you as she still waits to find out if she'll be on the list for kidney transplant or not. There's so many times in scripture that you tell us to wait. And there must be an awful lot of good that we learn by waiting on you. It reorients us, it changes us, it changes what would be our orientation of anxiety. And instead we become oriented to your word and your presence and to waiting upon you for life that comes. I commend her to you. Rejoice this night. We thank you, O Lord, that you have given power for her to overcome smoking. And this night, we commend it to you as she is um, giving up the lozenges. And we ask, O Lord, that you would give her strength and health we thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers for health for her. And we ask again that you would give her strength and that you would give her peace, relief, O oh Lord, and her health this night. We thank you for your mercy for her. Surround her this night, O oh Lord, with your love, a blanket of love, bed of love, a world of love, an ocean of love about her. And may that give her joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, there are so many others. I think every conversation I've had in the past week, I've heard of new people, oftentimes the family of the people I'm speaking to who are ill with COVID. It's something that's affecting every single household in some way or another. But we bring before you not only those who are experiencing the pandemic, but those who are experiencing side effects of pandemic and those who are encountering other things in the midst of a pandemic. We bring for you those that we name now silently or loud. We release them to your care. We place them in your garden of Eden, in the center of the waters that stream to them from your presence, the light that shines for them, the life that abounds around them. Hear now, O oh Lord, the prayers that we offer to you silently or loud for those who you created. Oh Lord, this night, we are reminded of your word that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. Rain down upon us from you in blessings that abound more than we can hold that these blessings are for the good of all, to be shared and spread. That is your way. And we thank you, O Lord, this night. We come to receive your blessings. And we go out this evening to spread those blessings wherever we go. In this coming week, O Lord, in our encounters, in our conversations, we pray that your peace will spread. Your hope will rise up. Your love will carry people. O oh Lord, in our encounters with the earth, may our presence 
carry the light of your healing for people and for creation all about us. We thank you, O Lord, that you are sufficient, that your strength is made perfect in weakness. You, you are ours and that we are yours. We rest in you this night through Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. God who lends you pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name. Thus you're going out and you're coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. into a weary world share the good news thanks be to god